Hello, my friends. My name is Pastor Lucas Mann, and I come from Lawrence, come about 45 minutes from here. I'm the pastor of the Spring Church in Lawrence, and friends, I just want to first and foremost tell you that I come out here for two reasons. Firstly, because I love my neighbor, I care for you, and secondly, because I love my God, and I want to honor and obey Him. I want to give Him glory and give Him praise. And so I come out here, my friends, to tell you about Him and to tell you about His saving grace as He has revealed it in the Gospel. The Gospel of grace. Dear friends, I'm out here to, to make known to you your sin, to call you out, to call you to repent. I'm out here to warn you about the, the coming wrath of God that will soon come upon you unless you repent. Friends, I'm out here also on behalf of your child to plead with you, to spare the life of that child, to not take into your hands something that belongs only to your Creator. And that is the ability to take life. God is sovereign, and God, God is the one who commands when life begins and when life ends. How dare we dishonor Him and try to strip from, something, try to strip from His hands something that He Himself possesses. Dear friends, I have people at my disposal, even I myself, who are willing to help you. I commit to help you if you spare the life of your child today, if you choose life. That child is precious. In fact, Scripture clearly states that it is an image bearer of God, that is, that it's made in the likeness of God. And so, my friends, for you to, to destroy the life of a child who is innocent would be to deface the image of God, to, to dishonor God's image. See, it all goes back to Him. You have offended Him, friends, by coming here today. You've offended your Creator, and you have provoked His hatred and wrath against you. And friends, that can only be removed through the saving work of Jesus Christ as it is revealed in the Gospel. That is the only way that God's wrath can be placated. Friends, God will not relent unless you repent. My friends, there is salvation in no one else. No one else besides the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way of salvation. The text of Scripture that I would like to look at is in Romans chapter 1. Beginning in verse 8, the Apostle Paul says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. For God, whom I serve in my spirit in the preaching of the gospel of His Son, is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you, always in my prayers making requests, if perhaps at last by the will of God I may succeed in coming to you. My friends, I'm out here to tell you about the gospel that the Apostle Paul speaks about here in verse 9. For he says that he serves God through the preaching of the gospel. And that is precisely my reason. I come out here out of service to God to make known to you the gospel of salvation. Salvation in Christ alone. For the glory of God alone. Because God is jealous for his own glory, friends. My friends, you must become the servants of God or you will be the servants of sin and the servants of the devil. For that is exactly what you are even now. And friends, the only way you can be freed from that is to become servants of the Most High God. To become servants of Yahweh. Otherwise, you will be eternally lost. You'll perish in your sins. And I don't want that for you, friends. I do not want that for you. I don't want you to die in your sins and be lost eternally. Instead, I want you to be reconciled to God. The Bible says that the gospel message is the word of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation to God.
You know, my friends, if I could title these three verses here, if I could give a title to what I'm about to proclaim to you, it would be unity among Christians. And you may think, well, why are you preaching concerning that? Because, my friends, my concern for many of you in here is that you may claim to be a Christian. You may claim to be born again, but you have no part with the people of God. In fact, you walk in disobedience to what God has said in His law concerning His people. You, you don't even care to fellowship with other believers. And you're here today to slaughter your own child, friends. What evidence that you are not truly saved has come about? And that is why I'm here to call any of you false Christians to repent and to believe the gospel of salvation. There are so many people, my friends, who are deceived. So many people who think because one point in their life they prayed the prayer, they walked an aisle, they had an emotional experience, my friends, but they, alas, were deceived. They had no uni unity among the brethren. In fact, many of these people will convert to Christ, quote and unquote, but then they will leave the church and they'll never come back. They care not for the people of God. They do not even love their neighbor. They're disrespectful toward one another, filled with anger and hatred. In fact, it, your hatred of your, of your fellow man is shown today by the fact that you want to slaughter your child, your own flesh and blood, your own kinsmen. The gift from God that has been given to you. The Bible says in Ruth 4.13 that God granted Ruth conception. My friends, God is the one who gives life. He is the one who grants that that child was given to you. It is a gift from you, or from God to you. From the Most High unto you, the most lowly and debased, the most sinful, the most vile worm. God has given you a gift, my friends. But I seek that you not only receive and appreciate the gift of a child, but that you, most importantly, receive the gift of eternal life. And that you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may receive the greatest gift, and that is gift righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. Friends, that is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And just a note on the context that Apostle Paul here is expressing his desire to care for the believers at Rome. He is expressing his love for them and his, his, his unity with them. And even in verse 9, as I said, he, he talks about how he serves God in the preaching of the gospel and how he prays on behalf of other believers in Rome. Truly, that is a beautiful picture of unity among believers, of unity among the brethren. And that is exactly what we will see in this text of Scripture in verse 8. The Apostle says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. My friends, notice the first thing the Apostle Paul says. He says, I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Friends, the only way that you can be right with God, the only way you have access to your Creator, is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way that you can have total and free and complete access to Him. It's through Jesus Christ. It's very exclusive. I know that that is an offensive message today. In fact, it's such a simple truth in Scripture that it's almost redundant for me to proclaim it. Yet, in the world these days, people are believing in, in postmodern ideology that says, well, basically, truth is relative and you can believe whatever you want and you'll be saved. But my friends, listen to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 14. He told His disciples, he said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said in verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. My dear friends, you are dead in your sins. You are heaped in iniquity. You drink it down like water. You bathe in sin daily. Your pornography, your idolatry, and now your murderous intent of heart to slaughter your child. Friends, you will surely perish in hell for your sins for all eternity. But friends, 
There is access to God. There is, there is one road to heaven. And it is Jesus the Messiah. He is the promised one. He is the one whom God has appointed to be the Savior of all men, especially of believers. Friends, Christ is able to save you. But if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, if you reject the fact that He died upon the cross and satisfied God's wrath against sin and that He rose again on the third day, if you reject that gospel message, then all that awaits for you is a fearful expectation of God's wrath. Dear friends, there, there are people willing to help you. My church is, is committed to help you. I have friends who are willing to adopt your child. Friends, there is a place just down the road in downtown Greenville, just a few miles. And they're an adoption agency. They will provide financial help, medical help. They'll counsel you. They'll help you find a job. They'll do whatever they can. They're very personal. It's not a big corporation, so they're very intimate and personal with you. And they will walk you through this process. Friends, you're not alone. The, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. God has given these other people and myself the ability to aid you and help you. Don't do this evil thing. Don't make some lame excuse. You know, we live in such a, a wealthy nation. We're one of the most wealthy nations in the world. We have so much at our, at our disposal. So much to our access. Friends, we have so much that we have access to. People are willing to help you. Reach out, my friends. Just simply reach out. They care for you and they care for your child. And you men in there, you need to man up. Get your lady out of here. I'm actually shocked she's still with you. Because how, what kind of man does it take? Or I should say, what kind of boy does it take to take his, his, his lady and then his own child into this place and to kill that child with the intent of taking that life because of his own comfort. Because he wants to keep his own comfort in this life, my friends. That is a selfish man. A selfish boy. And you men need to repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Man up and get your lady out of here and take care of that child and do it for the glory of God. Give God glory, my friends, through Jesus Christ. As I said a moment ago, He satisfied God's wrath against sin. See, that is precisely what hell is. And that is where you are on the road to, my friends, on the road to damnation, on the road to the eternal fire, which never shall be quenched, which shall never end. You are on your road to the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, the place of indescribable pain, the place which, pit, which has a pit that is totally unsoundable. There is no plumb line that can find its depth. My friends, hell is the place of torment and agony. Jesus said in Matthew uh, 25, 46, that it is a place of eternal punishment, my friends. But Christ satisfies the wrath of God on the behalf of the people of God. He satisfies God's judgment against sin. That's what hell is. God's pouring out His judgment, pouring out His wrath against the ungodly for all eternity. But friends, the cross is where God put His wrath on His Son, the innocent one, who never sinned. God slays His Son. God unleashes upon Him the fury of His judgment. And then raises Him up from the dead on the third day as the proof, as the evidence, as the declaration that He had paid for the sins of the people of God. That He had paid for the sins of the church. And my friends, I invite you today to join in. To come and to drink freely of the water of life. I invite you today, in light of the gospel message, to drink freely of salvation. Listen to the words of Isaiah 55.1. It says, Ho, everyone who, who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for that, what, that, excuse me, for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies shown to David. Verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. For, and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Friends, there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ for your sins. There is forgiveness in the blood of the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the people of God. My friends, the new covenant has been enacted. It has been ratified. It's been brought about, my friends. Believe the gospel and you will be saved from your sins. God will abundantly, not just partially, not just mostly, but abundantly, overwhelmingly, He shall pardon your sins. He will take them and wrap them up and plunge them into the depths of the sea, never to surface again. My friends, He will dissolve your guilt as He did to His servant David, who himself was a murderer, who himself committed horrible sins against the Most High, yet God in His grace unleashed abundant pardon upon David. My friends, I tell you today that God is willing. It is you who are not willing. In fact, listen to the very words he says in verse 2. He says, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Delight, excuse, excuse me, and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Oh, my friends, the Lord Jesus Christ repeated these very words in Matthew 11. He himself said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, you sinners, if you've heard the message of God's judgment and wrath and it has convicted you, then come to Christ and lay your burden of guilt and sin before the Lord of hosts. And it shall be removed from you. It shall be taken from you. And God will redeem you from your sins. Even you who claim to be Christians, for that is the main gist of what I want to portray and put across. That is that you who claim to be Christians but are here to, to slaughter your child, surely are not. Surely you have never been saved. There is great evidence that you are not converted in the first place. For these three verses, going back to Romans 1, speak on the unity of the brethren. Speak on the fruit of a Christian. One of the fruits already spoken about in this first part where Paul says that he thanks God through Jesus Christ is that a true Christian believes that the only way to God is through Jesus Christ the Lord. My friends, if you claim to be a Christian but you don't believe that, then I shall assure you that you are not a true Christian. That is one of the most simple facts of the faith. That the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. It is exclusive. It is for a very select few. In fact, Jesus Himself said in Matthew 13, He said, Enter through the narrow gate. For the, way, for the gate is broad and the way is... Uh, Excuse me, for the gate is large and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it. Oh, my dear friends, and I call you that simply because I care for your souls. Christ is warning you. There is a broad way to destruction and there is a narrow way to life. You may have had an emotional experience in a church. Uh, perhaps even a preacher told you you're a Christian. But my friends, it is not whether you say you're a Christian. It is whether you live in obedience to that and you live in accordance to that. It is whether you live for the Lord Jesus Christ. He himself said in that very same chapter of Matthew 5, he said that every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. And then verse 16 and verse 20, he said, you will know true Christians by their fruits. You will know a genuine Christian by the way they live, by the way they talk, by the way they think. Oh, my friends, what does your mind most think about? For that is your God. That is your God. Does your mind go to thinking about the Almighty and His beauty? Or does it go and set to sin? To go to your fornication and your drunkenness? To go to thoughts about slaughtering your child? 
Does it go to thoughts about the Lord Jesus Christ which do not honor Him, thinking He's just this all-inclusive Savior, and everybody in the end will be saved? That's dishonoring and blasphemous to the Lord God of hosts, because it is certainly not true. To have the wrong Christ is to not have Christ at all. If you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, but you have an idol in your mind that is not the Jesus Christ of Scripture, you have a false Christ and you have an idol, and you do not have the true and living Christ. And we know that the Scriptures say that he who does not have Christ does not have God, and he who does not have God does not have life, and he who does not have life is still abiding in death. Friends, and that is where you are going, to the place called death, hell. Friends, flee the wrath which is to come. Don't lose your souls for your sins. Don't lose your soul. It's the one thing, once it is lost, it cannot be regained. My friends, don't lose your souls for your sin. Repent and believe the gospel. God is, is abundantly gracious, but only to those who believe. Don't think that God is just going to sweep your sin under the rug, my friends. There will be judgment. There will be judgment that comes upon you for your sins. And the only way that can be removed is through the atoning work of Christ at the cross. So going back to the text, the Apostle Paul says, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. Well, my friends, that is a profound statement. But throughout the entire Roman Empire, people knew about the Roman Christians who were standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know from the annals of history that as time went on, the Christians in Rome began to experience more and more persecution. It continued to layer one atop another emperor upon emperor persecuted the church of Jesus Christ slaughtered Christians for their faith yet they were known for having a strength for having strong faith in the Lord of hosts my friends if you claim to be a Christian and no one around you even takes notice of the fact that you claim to be a Christian because you don't live according in accordance to it that's a great evidence that you were never saved in the first place see my friends it's not that you are saved by your works but you are saved so that you may do good works good works and obedience is not the cause of salvation but instead it is the result not the cause but the result my friends the cause of salvation is the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone but dear friends surely the evidence of a true Christian and a born-again child of God is that they will live in obedience to the Lord Most High and they will walk in accordance to his truth do not blaspheme do not reject the the trine the triune God the thrice holy Creator the Father, Son, and Spirit. Do not reject the true God of Israel, my friends. Instead, turn to Him that you may not be crushed, that you may not be eternally lost. In verse 9, the Apostle Paul continues, For God, whom I serve in my spirit. Dear friends, are you servants of God or are you servants of sin? Oh, my friends, many of you are slaves of sin and you cannot free yourself from the shackles of iniquity. You are instead bound to do only sin, 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 day in and day out. I know this not only because the Scriptures testify to them in the objective, but because I myself have experienced it in the subjective. That is, that I myself have lived this when I was lost, I was dead in sin and could only do sin and did not understand the things of God until God sovereignly poured out His saving grace upon me by the power of His Holy Spirit. My friends, you will only be saved if God does a work upon your hearts and your minds. If God regenerates you by His Spirit, surely this is the only way of salvation. I know that you cannot activate within yourself faith or the grace of repentance or saving belief in the gospel. But all such things are gifts from God Himself. As Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not, a res not as a result of works, so that no one may boast.
Listen to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 8, 34. He said, truly, truly, I say to you. In other words, this is true. This is a real thing I am saying. It's factual. So listen to what the Lord Jesus says. He says, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. My friends, you live in sin and you are the slaves to sin. But God is extending to you the offer to become a slave of Jesus Christ. For it is the glorious dichotomy that when you become a slave of Christ, only then are you most free from sin. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans. In that very chapter, as we're looking at in chapter 1, he says in verse 1, Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus, there the apostle employs the Greek word doulos. And that word means slave. He's the slave of Christ. You're either the slave of sin or you're the slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're either the slave of self or the slave of the Most High God. You're either the slave of your own transgressions and your own lawlessness or you're the slave of Yahweh Elohim. There is no neutrality with God. There is no neutrality with the Lord of hosts. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. My friends, God is not how you think He is. He is not who you think He is. He is holy and righteous and pure, abounding in loving kindness, yet He will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. He will not sweep your sin under the rug, my friends. He will surely damn you to hell for all eternity. If you have any spot or blemish upon you. And how do you know? Simply look at His law. Look at the commandments of God, my friends. God Himself said, you shall not lie. But how many of you live in a state of lying? Not just that you lie, but you live in a spirit of deception. And especially you who claim to be Christians, yet live in disobedience to the Lord Jesus. You are practicing the greatest form of lying, or I should say the worst form of lying. The worst form of deception. Self-deception, my friends. Another one of the commandments is God says, you shall not murder. And look at how that commandment is being trampled underfoot in this place, in this house of death, in this building with the red roof. How ironic because the blood of innocent children are shed in this place. My friends, God is holy and pure and just. The only way you can be reconciled to Him is through Jesus Christ. Friends, believe the Gospel. Believe that Jesus died and rose again on behalf of sinners. But as I was saying, another one of God's commands that is often broken and I myself have broken this. As God said, you shall not commit adultery. Many people say, well, I've never actually committed adultery. Well, then Jesus says in Matthew 5, if you look with lust, if you just think the thought, then you've committed adultery. My friends, how many of us sin against the Most High daily and do not even do it with our hands, but do it with our minds, with our mental faculties? How many of us do it with our hearts? How many of us have impure thoughts and intents of the heart that transgress God and dishonor Him? How many of us do that, my friends? Listen to the words of Genesis chapter 6. Beginning in verse 5, it says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then in the end of verse 6 it says, And he was grieved in his heart. My friends, your sins, the intents of your wicked hearts, dishonor and grieve the Most High. Not only do you provoke His anger and His wrath and His hatred upon you, but you grieve Him. You bring grievance upon the Most High. Sin brings grievance to God. 
And so because of rebellion, because of lying and thievery, because of blasphemy against the Lord, because of adultery and murderous people, because of their sins before the Lord, because He is just, just as a just judge would here on earth, He must consign the wicked to a place of prison and torment. He must punish the ungodly. He must punish them for their sins. Oh, my friends, how many of you would think it unjust for a judge here in Greenville County to consign a murderer to prison for life? Well, no one would see that as unjust. We would see it as a just punishment. But my friends, how many of you think of it just when a sinner commits a sin and an atrocity against the Creator and He consigns them to hell? For that is justice to the uttermost. And my friends, if you perish outside of Christ, you will receive justice. You will receive justice. Even you who claim to be Christians but who are hypocrites, you will receive judge judgment and justice upon your sins. But listen to what he says, continuing in verse 9. For God whom I serve in my spirit, in the preaching of the gospel of His Son. Oh, my dear friends, there is good news though. There is good news. Jesus Christ is the good news. The word gospel literally means good news, good tidings. It is a joyous occasion, my friends, when the gospel is preached. It is a time for rejoicing. It is a time for praise and adoration of the Most High God. Because God Himself has saved His people, has accomplished redemption in Zion. He has established His Anointed One, the Lord Jesus Christ. The words of the Lord in Psalm 2 verse 6 says, But as for me, I have installed my King upon Zion, my holy mountain. Oh, my friends, Christ reigns as King this day, and He Himself offers you benefits which you will not find anywhere else, and that is eternal life. See, my friends, God, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, has come and condescended. He has dwelt among the children of men. He has come to fulfill the law, and He did that perfectly. Those very commandments that we break daily, those very laws which we transgress, and which you fall short of to the uttermost, which you even claim to hate, many of you. He comes and He fulfills those laws and then He goes and He is whipped and beat and mocked. He is abandoned even by His own disciples alone there and is taken to the place of, of torment. He's taken, taken to the place of agony called the place of the skull of Golgotha. He is there nailed upon the cross and He is on that cross for hours suffering under the just judgment of God for the sins of the elect of the people of God. God slays His Son. The sin of the world was put on Christ and He was crushed under the weight of God's wrath. The words of the Isaiah 53 read that the Lord was pleased to crush Him it appeased the Most High God to slay His own Son. To unleash upon Him His fury. In fact, listen to the words of Romans 3. So this is just two chapters over from what we're looking at. And the Apostle Paul says these words in verse 24. Or excuse me, in verse 25. He says, this is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in His blood through faith. My friends, and then He says, this was to demonstrate His righteousness. God will not sweep your sin under the rug because He did not even sweep the sins of His people under the rug. But publicly presented His Son as a propitiation. Now my friends, that word you may not be familiar with, and it has a very simple definition. The word means in its simplest form, wrath has been absorbed. 
In other words, Christ is the sponge which absorbs the great and almighty wrath of God. He is the sponge which absorbs the infinite judgment of God upon the people of God. My friends, this is the beauty of the gospel message. This is the glory of the gospel. This is the power of God revealed. And my friends, not only did he die, but he rose from the grave. He defeated death. That's the beauty of it. He died a victor. He is alive today, my friends. In fact, Scripture says he is the life. He, by his own nature, is life. Death could not hold him in the grave. In fact, listen to the, the words of the end of Romans 4. The Apostle Paul says, He was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. He was raised so that God could pardon the wicked, so that God could forgive the sinner. My friends, He was raised on the third day. Believe the Gospel message. Believe the Gospel. Believe that He died for your sins and He rose and not only did He die and not only did He raise Himself up, but He lived for you. That is, if you repent, if you flee your sins, and you flee your rebellion, and you flee your lust, you flee your murder, and you turn to Christ, and you fall upon Him, then Scripture says God will forgive you of your sins and wrap you in the righteousness of Christ. God will forgive you. He will perfectly justify you. You will be eternally righteous in the sight of the Most High. You will be eternally righteous in God's sight. This is the glory of the Gospel, my friends. This is the Gospel by which I have been saved and all of the people of God throughout the ages have been saved. Even back all the way into the garden after man fell in Genesis 3, God promises the soul-crushing seed of a woman who would destroy the works of the devil. My friends, Christ has come to destroy the works of the devil. Believe Him. Listen to the words of Romans 10 11. It says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. My friends, Christ will not disappoint you. He will eternally save you from your sins. Now many preachers these days will say, yeah, your life will be easy. You'll have lots of money and health and wealth and prosperity. Jesus never promises that. In fact, he promises hardship. In fact, he himself said that if you want to follow after him, if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, then, dear friends, you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily and come after Christ. You must deny yourself self-hatred, self-abasement, self-forgetting, not self-loving, not self-serving or self-seeking. My friends, you must abandon yourself and seek after the glory of God. Forget about yourself and your desires and your dreams. Cling to Christ to have life. For He Himself said, when you lose your life, that is when you gain it. You gain by losing. You gain by losing it all for Christ. My friends, this is a hard salvation. It is free. Salvation is free. But being saved will cost you everything. My friends, believe. Believe the gospel. Turn from your sins. Deny yourselves. Do not slaughter your child. Lay your life down to serve that child and to raise it for the glory of God. Come to God through Jesus Christ for His glory. He is worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your honor. He's worthy for you to exalt Him for who He is and what He has done and what He has said. My friends, please flee your sins. Flee the vanity fair which shall soon be burned up by the fury of God's wrath. My friends, flee these things. I care for your souls. Many of you are young like me and you think that your life 
that there, you have many days left. Your life is going to be a long life. But that's not guaranteed to you, dear friends. Today could be the day. 160,000 people die every day. Today could be the day for you to stand before Him. The one before whom heaven and earth shall flee on the day of judgment. What a terrifying thought that is. He is holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the triune God. Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy is the Spirit. Three in one. One in three. My friends, give God glory. Surely what a foolish thing it is to lose your soul. What a foolish thing it is to throw your eternal destiny in the garbage and to go to hell for your sins. Think about it. All eternity is spent in hell for a little blimp in time. A little tiny piece of your existence spent in the pleasures of sin. Sin is pleasurable for a season, my friends, but it will render judgment. So the apostle continues... He says, For God, whom I serve in my spirit, in the preaching of the gospel of His Son, is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you, always in my prayers making a request, if perhaps by the will of God I may succeed in coming to you. And my friends, I will just simply say this, in the words of the Apostle Paul, I myself make mention of you, even on the way here this morning, I was praying on your behalf to the Almighty that He might pour out His mercy upon you. My friends, I care for you. The Apostle Paul cared for those believers in Rome. And I care for you, my friends. Even you pagan idolaters, I care for you. And I make mention to God on your behalf. I am praying for your eternal redemption. Believe the gospel of salvation. God will wrap you in Christ's righteousness. You'll be clothed in His perfect righteousness. Don't trust in yourself or your religious performance. Don't trust in your unrighteousness. It will not suffice. You cannot earn it by your deeds. It's a grace gift. A gift of grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, my friends, dear friends, please, even you doctors and nurses in this place, this house of death, this den of demons, believe Christ, believe the gospel of salvation. Perhaps many of you say, well, I'm not coming here for an abortion. My friends, don't support even this wicked place. Auschwitz served good soup, but it does not matter. They slaughtered thousands of Jews. Gypsies, homosexuals, they slaughtered them. Just because a place provides good service on one area does not mean they provide does not mean they do not provide bad service on another. Don't support, don't give your money to this place, my friends. Instead, I'm willing to help you, my church is willing to help you. There's a place just down the road. Quiver full adoptions, just look them up. They're willing to help you for free. Ultimately, you must, you must deal with this. This is the God whom I've preached about, or the God with whom you must deal. You must deal with Him either today, or you will deal with Him on the day of judgment, and it will be too late then. It will be too late for you to repent. It will be too late for you to believe. You will be thrown into the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone for all eternity. Come and live. Look to Christ and live. In the words of the Apostle Paul in this chapter, let me make mention of you in my prayers now. Let me lift up a prayer to God on your behalf, my friends. Let me lift up a prayer to God Almighty. Dear God, I pray on behalf of these people in this place that you'd have saving grace upon them, that you'd show your mercy, you would shine your grace upon their darkened hearts and give them faith in the gospel of Christ for your glory and His glory. Amen and amen.